I've been gambling now for roughly about 40 years, give or take. Until a couple of years ago. When I decided I wanted to stop being a gambler and become a trader. And since then, I found it very difficult to do that. The reason being, I just can't accept a loss. Especially when the game's in play. Now, being a gambler over the 40 years, I've done a lot of losses. Hell of a lot of losses. So losing isn't the problem. The problem I find is, when the game's still in play, when you've got a losing position, obviously that can turn around. And that's the problem I'm having. It's the betting side of me, the gambling side of me, overrules the trading. I know I should be trading out. I know I should be taking the loss. I know I should be moving on to the next game. But I just can't do it. So a year ago, I decided to go back to basics. And the most common trade you can do for the beginner is to lay the draw. And the reason why it's so easy for the beginner, because there's only two actions. You lay the draw before the kickoff. Once there's a goal, you exit. Now, just because there's a goal doesn't mean to say your trade is successful. If the underdog scores first, more than likely you'll be trading out for a loss. Unless it's very late on in the game. Now, it's when I see that loss, that's what I can't accept. I can accept a loss at the end of the game. I can't accept the loss when the game is still in play. When potentially the game could turn around and that loss can be, still can become a win. Now there's plenty of videos on YouTube about lay the draw strategy. Of which I'm not going to go into now. But for the purpose of this video, I thought, well what happens if you would lay the draw and just let it go as a bet? A set and forget as they say in the trading terms. So this is not a trading video. This is just purely what would happen if you was to lay the draw from kickoff. So what I did, I recorded every single game in the Premier League, the Championship, Division 1 and Division 2. I also included the National League and the Scottish League, but I wasn't really bothered about those. I just included them just to, just to compare it. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you would have seen these sheets before. But if you stumble across this, I'm going to do some housekeeping and I'm just going to show you what my sheet is in front of you. Now, these are the final results, so we'll ignore them for now. What I did is... I recorded, obviously, the date, the home side, the away side, the Betfair price at kickoff. What it would cost you if you was laying it to a £10 stake. The off time score. The price what it would have been if they're drawing at half time. The full time score. How many goals there was in the second half. I recorded this in case I want to do something in the future for strategies and that. And this is the results section. The first section there is an 80% one. This is something that I was trying to do myself using my own skills to see if I can beat 80%. I'll come on to this in a little bit. And this here is if the uh, trade would have won. I said trade. This isn't a trading video, so this would have been if the bet would have won. It's £9.80. For those who are not familiar, when you go on Betfair, there's normally a, a commission. My commission is 2%. So if the bet would have gone on 1, it would have been £10 less 2%. So you actually return £9.80. And I also recorded the losses. Now I did the half time one as well. But all I was really bothered about was at full time from, from 90 minutes onwards. Now just to clarify, the bet fair price there is not necessarily 100% correct. Now what I mean by that is because some of these 
I may have took maybe 30 minutes before the game started. Majority of them are within two minutes of the game kicking off. However, I do have a social life and I'm not sat next to a computer 24-7. So some of these may not be accurate. However, for the purpose of this, it, it's good enough because some would have been up a few ticks, some would have been down a few ticks. And I did this for every single division, well, every, in, in the English League. I'll pop it. And like I said, I did the National League and the Scottish League as well. Now I'm just going to talk about this 80% what I was trying to do. This was my attempt to try and beat 80%. The reason why it's 80% because statistically 5% of the games end in a draw. So therefore 75% don't. So the 80% was my attempt to try and beat that. And what I did is I recorded every single score. Home and away. And you can see from the bottom, I've recorded everything. First half goals, second half goals, percentage of goals. I'm not going to go into it all. But then I calculated this. And this is where you can put team against team. Whatever team you want. Say so West Ham against, well just leave it at Tottenham. And this will give you statistics up to now. And my attempt was basically to beat 80%. And the reason why what I did is what the chances would be of a second half goal. Which would be this one here. I'll just highlight it a bit better. If that was 80%, then that's what I would record. This is what this section is. I could put all the teams in, what was playing on that specific day, and then I would edit, have 80%. I'd also add over 1.5s, over 2.5s, both teams to score, first half goals, that was the table, all, all at my fingertips. And if this was ever highlighted in green, that was my attempt to beat 80%. So that's what this section is here. Because I do have a, uh, a social life and I'm not sat next to my computer 24 seven. There are some games that I miss. And what I did with those ones, I put them in yellow. As you can see here, I missed a full section of, of games there. So I put down four. How I came across that four, because that was the average price at the time. And at the end of the season, what I did is I put all that information into a table. The games that I'd, I'd missed, the ones that was in yellow, I've then gone back into and I went onto this website here. And the ones that I'd missed, I'd just gone back in time to find out what they were. And I've used the Betfair Exchange and what I did, I rounded it up, so if I did this game, this would go to 7.5. Now I've learned since that, that even this site is not 100% accurate, but it's better than what I had put. So it's good enough for my experiment. So now I've put it into a table, I can drag any information I want to drag. So let's just say I wanted a specific month. So obviously I just click in there. And I just want the games in February. So I can just look at the, all the games in February and I can see what, what would have happened then. I'll turn that back. Alternatively, we can just look, if you want to look for a team. And because Arsenal is just the first team on the list, we'll look at Arsenal. So there are all the games Arsenal had at home. Also, what we can look at, 
which I, I think is more valuable is actual price so I can exclude certain prices so let's work his way all the way down all the way down to say four so let's sleep on it so that's the arsenal for those just prices if you want to do the full league so there weren't many <laughs> so out in the full league of the Premier League below 4 or 3 to 1 in old money there was only 18 matches that's quite that's quite low and obviously the reason why I've been that is because there was lots and lots of goals in the Premier League in the season just gone but we can play around and I can get any information I want now from there I'm just going to put that back so that's what these tables are and obviously at the top you don't need to see that a little bit at the top are the results now I've done that favourite division so we'll just go to the end I recorded every uh, month as well but I'm not going to show you every single month individually all I've got about is the total I've got two totals first total has been all the leagues together the second total is excluding the Scottish and the National League so in Premier there were 380 games the average price was 3.93 it would cost you nearly £15,000 to lay every single game to a £10 stake. And the profit was £141. Just 1% 1 return investment. Championship. 552 games. Just over £16,500. And you would have had a return of 600 which is just 3.58%. League 1, you would have won £674. League 2, you would have won £394. I haven't included the National League and the, Premier, and the Scottish Premier for this because that was not my intention to begin with. So in total, there's 2,036 games. Average price was 4.17. It would have cost you over £63,000 for a return of £1,769 or 2.8% return on investment. Now, nine months ago, if I said to you, give me £63,000 and I will give you £1,769 interest, you'll probably laugh at me and tell me to get lost. And you would have done. The reason being, the average saving account in the UK at present is around about 4 to 4.4% to 4.5 percent you can get higher ones but this is just a basic savings account you can get nicer for around about five percent your stocks and shares has been a good year and i put 10 percent but you could have got a lot higher than that so why would you lay the draw at 2.8 percent return you just wouldn't do it but let's look at it a different way There's 380 games in the Premier League, but what happens if we break it down into weeks? There's 10 games in, in a game week. Average price being 4.93. And if all things were being equal, it would cost you £393 to lay all 10. Now, what if you use the same £393 week in, week out? Every week, it's the same £393 you're using. Well, end of this season, there have been 380 games. Again, £393 because it's been recurring using the same amount of money every single week. And your return was £141. Now, your return investment has shot up to nearly 36%. Now, that's a lot better than 1%. So, what happens if we do it for every single division?
So to lay all the games in one single week, there'd be 46 games. It would cost you £1,445 to lay every game to a 10% stake. Uh, sorry, £10 stake. At the end of the season, you'll get £1,769 back. Now your return on investment is now 122%. Now this is worth doing. Now obviously, the price is not always the same each week. Some peak weeks it will be higher, some weeks it will be lower. But if all things was equal, 4.17% is what it would have been and obviously your profits at the same time would have gone up and down it doesn't go in a straight line so the question is now now i know all these facts will i be laying the draw in the 24 25 season well the answer is no and the reason being what i've shown you so far is everything that's happened in the past it's not to say what's going to happen in the future each season is not the same season. We have relegation, promotion, we have new players, players leaving, new managers, everything's not the same. So you can't judge what's happened in the past, necessarily what's going to happen in the future. However, it is a good basis. Now what I'm going to be doing is doing exactly the same in the forthcoming season and just see if there's any trends. Now I want to go back to at the beginning of the video now when I say I've been trying to convert from being a gambler to a trader and even after two years of trying this I'm still finding it very difficult to take the loss when it's in play. If anybody out there is also having the same difficulty just tell me what you're doing. How can I get over from being a gambler to a trader? Any help would be appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.